Hello, okay, so we're gonna talk about the Saval SV08 on today's video. So the other day did an unboxing live stream of this printer, we built it, we got it up, and we took a look at it, and a bunch of people are asking if I'm gonna do a review on it, and the answer is I'm not gonna do a review on this printer. I can't do a review on this printer. It's not done. It, it, to be honest, it's not done. Um, so let, let's talk about some things I saw, I liked, I didn't like about it. So this is a recap. This is just like my thoughts on the printer. This is not a review. Please don't call this a review. So firstly, during the build, there were a few concerns that I saw. Namely, uh, underneath the printer itself, the wire run that goes from the tool head all the way down to the controller, there's a sheet metal plate underneath uh, that protects the controller from little fingers and whatnot getting in there. Yeah, the, the wires run right through a slot in that plate um, with bare sheet metal very close to the wires. There's no grommet or edge protector in place. Um, so there should be some grommet or edge protector there. That is a safety issue, especially because of the position of it. 3D printers vibrate. I could potentially see after a couple months, potentially years of use, um, that, that potentially causing damage to wires and causing a short. That's not good. Other than that though, the electronics under the hood, I'm actually pretty happy with. The controller seems okay. Um, it's a solid state relay, more sun power supply, 150 watt. It is an auto switching power supply, so you don't have to do the switch between 110 and 220 land. Uh, everything is properly crimped with ferrules and spade connectors and whatnot, protection in place. Um, I'm, I'm okay with the electronics under the hood. Um, things above the hood though, get a little bit more iffy. Now, when it comes to the gantry itself, I do want to give a thumbs up because compared to some other current printers, uh, such as the Bamboos, the Cheaties, the Crealities, this is a lot more user serviceable. Um, all these blue parts you see here are injection molded and they do have replaceable bearings. The, the pins that hold the bearings in place, there's a heat set or Actually, this is injection molded. There's an injection molded screw threaded insert underneath. That's just to hold the pin in place. Uh, but you could put like a, a punch up through there. And as you can see in the top, you could just take that little uh, cap screw out and drift the pin out to take the uh, bearing out. So that's actually really nice that you can replace these bearings. However, these parts are all injection molded, uh, which means you can't really modify or replace them um, other than replacing the entire assembly, which kind of sucks when... Uh, we have bent bearings. So if if you look at this bearing stack here, it's on an angle, it's crooked. Um, and I, I tried drifting the pin out, I took the pin out, I, I checked the bearings and whatnot. Yeah, you, you can't fix this. I, I need to replace this entire motor mount um, because this bearing is stack is, is crooked. And it's already, you know, I've maybe got six hours on the machine. It's already chewing up belts. So we're already shredding belts on this thing. Um, so, so there's that. Um, this, connector here for the the wire loom to attach it to this extrusion I had to fix because it comes with a single screw and the extrusion is tapped with one thread of engagement so of course it's stripped right out um, it do, they don't use t-nuts or anything they just drilled and tapped the extrusion itself um, the camera here on the stream we couldn't get it working I switched USB ports and now it's working uh, but this as you can see, there should be a panel on here, uh, shipping a Voron clone without panels and without even an ABS profile is sacrilege. Um, but these wires here are gonna rub on your panels. Um, both of these are probably gonna end up rubbing on the panel and they're gonna leave streaks up and down the panel because this moves up and down every print. So that is something. Uh, <laughs> Now I did do a more involved uh, print after the stream ended. I printed this little flexible Charmander. There's plenty of cooling on the tool head. Uh, so overhangs and whatnot came out good with this PLA, but there is like a Z banding or inconsistent extrusion issue going on. Uh, I'm gonna have to do some looking on. But the main thing is with this printer, it's not done. Uh, now granted, they did ship this to me a couple weeks ago. Um, and it doesn't launch till tomorrow, but as of right now, there's only one profile for this machine. It's an Orca Slicer 19 PLA profile. And I heard some people mention that you can use normal Voron profiles on it. Uh, no, I, I tried a Orca Slicer 20 Voron V2 350 profile. The starting G code is completely incompatible. Um, so what I ended up doing was taking the start G code from the official Saval profile and basically copy and paste that into a Orca Slicer Voron profile. And now it's working. That's how I printed this guy, but it's not working right. <laughs> Um, if you're going to go through all the trouble to mimic a Voron V2, which let's be honest, that's what this is, um, 
but it's not a Voron. More on that later. Um, at, at least learn why a Voron does why it does. So what I mean is, yeah, see, see this? Uh, this is actually a load cell switch, and this is a nozzle brush. It doesn't use either of those. <laughs> During the initial startup of the machine, it asks you to calibrate a few things, and one of them is your Z offset, and it does set your Z offset based off this little load cell switch here with an inductive probe, it's metal, so it measures that, and then it hits it with the nozzle itself and sets your Z offset, which it was not correct. I still had to manually go in and adjust my Z offset, and it also uses the nozzle brush. But during actual printing, the G code that they give you to operate this machine completely ignores that. So when it starts a print, it uses the inductive probe in the tool head to do a QGL, a quad gantry level, and then an adaptive bed mesh, and then it just does a purge line and print. On a Voron V2, a stock configuration of Voron, you are supposed to, after doing your inductive probing and meshing and all that, you're supposed to use your nozzle in conjunction with a mechanical Z switch, or in this case here, a load cell switch, to set your Z offset. Because inductive probes drift based on heat. So what that means is, while it may be very accurate at 20 degrees, and it may be very accurate at 60 degrees, the value that you get at 20 and 60 will be different. And the inductive probe in this tool head is right there. So what happens is, is if you, from the machine being cold, if you start a print, the bed will heat up and then it'll go right into printing. But if you say stop the print because, you know, print failure, you know, your first layer sucked um, and you start over, well, that probe's been next to the bed. It's been heating up and now your Z offset's going to be different than it was the first time. That's why you use the nozzle and the switch there which the stock configuration that they send you with the printer does not use. Why? Why, why would you? And, and also, again, it doesn't even use the nozzle brush. So this needs a lot more time in the oven. It, it, it's as a, as a person who, you know, I run a 3D printing YouTube channel. I look at 3D printers all the time. Um, as somebody who works with 3D printers all the time, it is getting extremely frustrating at how undercooked things are shipping lately. Um, this has one profile for PLA. It, it's a Voron clone that doesn't even have an ABS or an ASA profile. What, what the heck? Um, it doesn't even include panels. It, it does have all the, uh, the holes and everything ready to mount panels to it, but it doesn't include panels. Those will be available at a later date. I don't know why. The panels just, just include them, but whatever. Um, other little nitpicky things. Um, this is, this is going to sound really dumb, but yeah, the, the spool holder mount here. Okay, cool, whatever. It, it comes with a 10 cent micro switch. Apparently that's a feature. Um, that's worth making note of uh, for a filament run out. But see how it's mounted on this side on a generic extrusion with some tapped holes? Yeah, they don't have tap holes on any of the other extrusions. So this is the only place you can mount it. So if you want to put this over there, um, get out your drill and tap. Like if, if just, just this extrusion is the same as that extrusion. Just, just have them all this kind so we can just, you know, swap. It's, it's not rocket appliances. Not everyone can mount their spool right here. Also, the machine's tall. And now it's even taller. It, this won't fit on a lot of shelves, so you're gonna have to figure out a different filament storage solution. But anyways, that, that's a nitpick, but spool holders on printers have been something that's been bugging me for a while. So guys, put, just put holes everywhere so people could just mount them wherever. It's not, it's not rocket appliances. Um, one thing I do like though, it does include normal clipper. This is running just Clipper 12, as far as I'm aware. It's got unmodified mainsail. Um, the only thing that they've changed is in mainsail, uh, they did remove the ability to do updates. So normally in Clipper, you can hit a button to auto update. They've removed that, uh, which makes sense with a commercial machine. You're probably gonna not want users just updating randomly because it may potentially with Clipper, sometimes certain updates break certain functionalities with certain add-ons. So with a commercial machine, it kind of makes sense to somewhat lock it down uh, just to prevent users from finicking with stuff. But that's good because that means because it's unmodified Clipper, we can get into the config and we can make it actually work right. Um, th this, this machine is not done. This machine needs way more time in the oven. Hardware wise, it's not too bad, but there's issues. I've, I've got an, uh, a bearing stack that is crooked. Now here's the thing, it's an injection molded part. Did the part just, you know, is it a badly shot part? Is it a short shot? Did the part warp, uh, not enough cycle time or whatever? I don't know. Are they all like that? I don't know. Um, I don't have another machine to compare it to, and most of the reviews I've seen for this machine are pretty much, here's the specs, here's a print, go buy it. So I, I can't really, there, there's nowhere, there's no reference I can find to see if other people have, you know, crooked bearing stacks. Um, also, the tool head. This tool head is absolutely massive. Like, 
I, I know this is the current trend with tool heads and 3D printers where you have this big monolithic blob with a 4020 blower fan or whatever in the middle. Um, but see the ducts there? See how far back the ducts are? Yeah, this, this whole front part doesn't need to be a giant rectangle. I can't see anything. When you're, when you're doing the first layer, you cannot see the first layer. So if you're printing small like a Benchy, um, and since again, it's using just the inductive probe for your Z offset, so it's gonna drift, so you may have to live adjust your Z, you can't see anything because this giant tool head is just covering everything. Um, functionally, it's fine. You know, it, it would be nice if it wasn't using proprietary nozzles and whatnot. Um, but, you know, it's it's mounted on with three screws and it's it's just clippers, so I'm sure there'll be a community mod. I am getting really fed up with the point that so many printers, as of late, need, still need community. We're like, we're, we're past the point of Ender 3 clones, guys. Like, we're, we're, we're in the future now. Companies need to stop relying on users, okay? It, it's getting really annoying. Like, I shouldn't... Creality users shouldn't have to download a community-created script to just give back the functionality that Creality removed out of their printer. Um, Saval owners shouldn't have to take Voron configs and copy and paste chunks into their SV08 and remap pins to get the same functionality that they didn't properly implement. Like, it, it's this is why I don't do printer reviews. Like, it, it's it's kind of frustrating because when you get the printer and when it's the best time to do a review for all those sweet views is when the printer, printer first comes out, yet companies keep shipping unfinished product to us. It, it's not ready. Now, I'll make a note because I know somebody's gonna say this in the comment. I got a Magneto X down there. I, I, I'm not doing this for the Magneto X, why not? Well, because it was, you know, I got a pre-production unit. I got it before production was out. They took feedback from us and they implemented design changes from those testers in the production units. This is going on sale next week. And as far as I'm aware, that this is what's shipping. Um, hopefully they have proper profiles by then and they, they, they redo some of the configs and macros to make this operate better and properly. Um, but until then, can I recommend it? Um, if, if you're good with mucking about with Clipper, maybe. If you're okay with wrenching on stuff, maybe. Um, but again, it, it's, you know, I'm not gonna say yes or no. It depends on the user. It's, it's, it's cheap, I'll give it at. But are we, are we going back to the race to the bottom? Who has the cheapest printer? I thought we moved past that, but uh, a lot of the comments when, I, when people mention this thing are, oh, it's so cheap. I'm going to get it because it's cheap. Um, I'm not going to get it because it's good or I'm not going to get it because it does everything that it should do. I'm going to get it because it's cheap. And I, I thought we were past that point, but it looks like we aren't. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this because I really don't want to spend an afternoon of my own time diving into the clipper configs, making profiles for slicers. I, if, you're, if a company is going to send a printer for review, it should be ready to go. It, it, it's ready for review. It's, it's not a pre-production testing sample. It's, it's, here's our printer, review it, okay? It's not done. I can't review it. Maybe I'll take another look at it once it's actually, like, ready to go. And there's an ABS profile for it. <laughs> We're on without an ABS profile. What is the world coming to? Um, but, yeah, also, um, because this has come up, um, Saval has had reached out to the Boron design team, um, in regards to collaboration and promotion or a bunch of stuff. It, we gave them the exact same uh, response that we give all companies. For those that don't know, I am on the Voron Design team. Um, I have seen the admin ticket. Um, TLDR, Voron doesn't collaborate or endorse any company ever. If you go on the Voron Design website, even LDO Motors. We've worked with LDO Motors uh, for a certain product. They've supplied us with motors and hardware and whatever, but there is no official Voron endorsement of LDO Motors or any company. Voron doesn't work that way. It's a completely nonprofit uh, open source project. It, it, we throw it, so much money's left on the table and we like it that way. We don't want to be involved with that kind of stuff. Too much paperwork. Um, and as part of that admin ticket with Saval, uh, they apparently mentioned they want to donate to the uh, fraction of the funds to Voron Design and the response was basically cool. There's a donate button on the website if you want to use it. The same thing we tell everyone. Um, now apparently they're running with that and using that as part of their promotion that they're donating funds to Voron. Cool, if they do, they do. Um, but there's no agreement or any, any contract or anything in place. So until they do that, 
it, it's just marketing buzzwords. Um, other companies and people have promised to donate in the past and haven't. So until they actually do, it's again, just marketing. There's no agreement or contract in place. Anyone is free to click on that button on the website and click donate. There's no express written agreement or anything in regards to that. Um, so yeah, it's a printer. It does make a plastic boat. Hopefully they finish it. Cheers.